Hi guys, it's Ray, and I know I did a book haul really recently, but I kind of bought some more books. As you do, you know. I went to Oxford, okay? I was in Oxford last weekend. Um, I went, to, uh, me and uh, the boyfriend, down to Oxford um, to stay with some friends, and we also went to see the producers, uh, since Ross Noble was in the producers, along with Jason Manford, which was very surprising. Um, but yeah, we went down to Oxford, and there's a lot of bookshops in Oxford. I mean, I didn't actually go into Blackwells, uh, I did go to Waterstones, didn't buy anything in Ward... No, no, that's a lie. That's a dirty lie, Rachel, that you're about to just completely dispel. Yeah, went into Waterstones, bought some books, went into, like, the sort of couple of Oxfam uh, bookshops there in Oxford, there's two. Um, I bought books from both of them, and and also went round the gorgeous. There's a shop that's, like, near to one of the Oxfam bookshops, like, sort of near the covered market called Scriptum, and it is the most gorgeous gorgeous shop and everything there is so expensive but I just look at it and it's like oh, I want everything because they have like they basically have like qu like quills like ink pen like ink pens like really gorgeous like quill pens and like ink wells and leather bound notebooks from Italy and they have like photo society editions upstairs they have really gorgeous stationery and stuff and it's just I want everything uh, but then it's like no can't afford £35 notebooks. Go away, Rachel. Can't do it. So, yeah. Like, no, but, yeah, I bought uh, four of these books in Oxford uh, last weekend, and then I bought another one um, from another Oxfam um, shop, actually, in, in town the other day, and I kind of read all that one already. But, anyways, I don't want to make this too long, because I'm supposed to be writing. I'm supposed to be writing, because I'm doing okay with writing at the moment. Still not, like, up to really decent levels of word counts because it's been a while since I've really done <laughs> like work on this so it's like okay we'll just do this and then we'll get back to writing because yesterday was yesterday was a good day I got like about 1300 1400 words done I should be able to finish like this thing today but yes now books um from Waterstones I got stuff like buy one get one half price so I was like yeah I just like just sort of went to the table going I want that, and I want that. Well, it's kind of more of a need. I need that, I need that. And I got um, Lying Out Loud by Cody Keplinger. This is, um, it's kind of, it's just the thing. It's like all of a lot of her books are all sort of set around the sort of Hamilton High School thing. Um, this is probably the only one that's like a direct kind of, re it's not really a, none of them are like sequels. They're all kind of companions to each other, and there's like characters that appear between them. And this one follows, because, um, the Duff being the first one, and um, that had Wesley, uh, Wesley Rush in there. This has his sister, Amy Rush, in it. Although, you wouldn't know that from the film, because she never fucking appears. Which is one of my, sort of, issues with the film. I think some, loads of people really love the film, and some bits I liked, but then it's like, I just wish it had been the actual book, because the book was just... It was... It didn't have the kind of, oh, proper mean girl antagonist thing. It had actually, like... Like Bianca was her, more of her own antagonist than than uh, that sort of whatever her face was Madison or whatever they call her I can't remember, but yeah this is following uh, um, Wesley's sister although the main character is actually called uh, someone called Sunny who as the title might suggest has a bit of a lying issue so I I'm I'm intrigued I've been it's like I kind of reread like all three of Cody's books earlier this year because I. Because I wanted to do, because I think I went before I went to see a film, and I was like, I, I need, I need, I need a, um, a reread. And the next book that I got is The Lost and the Found by Cat Clark, and I just. Cat Clark's books are just always fantastic. Because um, I read Kiss in the Dark last year before YLC, and it was just like. So many emotions! And when I read Undone, that was just. Oh my god. And. and Entangled. I've still got to read Torn. I have Torn. I haven't. It's like I have all of Cat's books. I haven't read Undone. On uh, there. Th th Put your teeth back in, woman. I haven't read Torn. I don't know why, but I haven't yet. That's something I need to sort out. Um, but yeah, all of Cat's books are fantastic. And there's, and this one is just. It's kind of strange. This is like the gritty version of Emmy, Emmy and Oliver that I read recently. Emmy and Oliver has kid who got kidnapped and then comes back. This has a girl's sister who has been kidnapped and comes back. 
But I imagine this is going to stab me in the feels a lot more than Emmy and Oliver will. Although Emmy and Oliver did still kind of make me cry a bit. But yeah, I am super excited for this. And I don't want to... I'm pretty sure I'm not lying when I say Kat's going to be at YLC. I'm hoping she is. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I... For some reason, my brain has gone really blank on YLC and like all kind of ideas of who's who's gonna be there when is just completely foxed. I have no idea because they still haven't released a kind of program thing of okay, this author's signing from this point to this point, this author's signing from like this point to this point. I need to know so I know what books to bring. It's two weeks away. It's so close. Where is this pro like this schedule? Please. Because, I mean, there's lo all the panels and stuff and, like, workshops have been things. I still enjoy it. I go, I want to do that and that and that. But so much of the good stuff is on Sunday. There's so much good stuff on Sunday. And it's really annoying. Because we're not going to be there. Um, but, yes. That's what I bought from Waterstones. And now from uh, the Oxfam bookshops. Uh, no, that's like, the other one. Um, well, first one I got um, is Dragonfly and Amber by Diana Gabaldon. And... It's taken me a very long time to get this is the second book in the Outland series. I I I mean I read Cross Stitch uh, like eight ages ago. I reread it last year, I think. But I've just never been able to find Dragonfly and Amber. It's like I've always seen like sort of the fiery drum. That's the one I end up seeing in in shops far oh no, it's the Fiery Cross and Drums of Autumn. Well done, you stupid book. But I've, so I've just never seen Dragonfly and Amber. I don't know why, or let, or have, and then I've just been stupid and not realised that that's the sequel, I don't know. But yeah, I finally got this, which is um, set, like, the start of it is set, like, 20 years later, like, spoiler alert, Claire's, if you've not seen Outlander, Claire ends the first book, you know, so, like, that's kind of set 20 years later, but then it all kind of flash back to, like, the end of Outlander, and then follows on what they're doing while they're in France. That's basically what's been happening so far in about the first 220 so pages. So I'm I'm intri I'm intrigued to see where this is going. There's a lot of book. A lot of stuff's gonna happen. It's gonna be gonna be fun. Um, and the other book that I got from the other bookshop is Trudy Canavan's The Traitor Queen, which is the third book in the Traitor Spy trilogy. Um, I have basically every Trudy Canavan book there is. Like, all of those, I have them all! But I've not read, sort of, like, because her more recent one was like the Am Ambassador's Mission, and then there's Rogue, um, yeah, the Rogue and the Traitor Queen. I haven't, uh, I've read the Amb Ambassador's Mission when it came out, like, it's quite a few years ago now, but I haven't got around to actually reading the second two. And uh, I bought the Rogue like from a charity shop, and then I got this one from a charity shop. It's like three pounds for a mildly creased spine version of it, and it's this is only fairly recently coming to paperback as well. I was like, I'm not gonna leave that behind because then I can actually marathon the whole series. But I might actually like do a whole, whole thing because this the Traitor Spy trilogy follows on from like the Magicians Guild. Um, series which I, I really really liked. Although I originally read it from the borrowed the first one from the library and borrowed the second book, uh, so they can sort of be read independently. But it does help if you've read the the first one. So um, I might actually do a full like whole marathon of all of them because Trudy is probably one of the f the few of my fantasy authors that I've not reread this year because I've been rereading everybody. We'll see. We'll see. I'm I'm intrigued. I I it's kind of, one of the things. Trudy Canavan's one of these kind of like auto buy authors that I just kind of go, oh, it's a new Trudy Canavan book, buy that. Um, so I just just acquire all of it. It's like Trudy Canavan, Brandon Sanson, Gail Carriger, Tamora Pierce, obviously, Tamora Pierce, all the way. Um, and who, who else is my sort of auto buys? Uh, they're the kind of like ones that have got quite a lot of stuff. So they're like the auto buys. They're the ones where I've got like about nine to ten books by. So it's like, yeah, they they get they get the auto buys. Um but yes, and the last book that I got from uh, the Oxen Shop in town is uh, A Wild Pursuit by Eloisa James. This is yes, it's a Regency Romance novel because I have I have I have an addiction. And since I've read a lot of Stephanie Lauren stuff and I've read various ones, Julia Quinn's, but I've read one Eloisa James and I really, really liked it. Um so I thought I would buy this and it was like it was like one forty nine or something like that. It was or two forty nine. It was very cheap, so I I bought it and I read it because 
lulls and I was procrastinating other stuff. So, yeah. At some point, I'm, I'm going like, to sort of go back through all my like, sort of read um, romance novels and just cull, cull out like this sort of... Most of them are bought like from charity shops and stuff, so it's not like I'm throwing away sort of seven or eight pounds a pop. Um, but at some point, they will... Uh, I'll probably have to cull them out and then buy some more or borrow some more. I don't know. Who knows? But yes, those are all the books I got. I'm possibly going to end up buying some more this weekend because I'm going to London. It's not for what? Yeah, what? Blah, 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 blah. It's not for Yalk. Um, but I'm going down to London on Saturday with Le Boeuf. We're going to uh, meet some, some people uh, for the day um, while they're in England. And yeah, I'll probably. <laughs> I might just say, should we go to foils? Let's go to the new foils. Let's do that. Let's go and buy something from there. Because that's the thing that I will probably do. But if I don't, then the next thing is going to be Yalk. Which I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to get to Jess's yet. Because my car needs an MOT that week. It's all going to be fun. But yes, this video has got longer than I thought. And I need to get some writing done because... I want this scene, I want this chapter done before I have to go to the hairdressers later because this hair, this strange mass of hair that is whatever it is, is getting, getting a cut. We're going back to Pixie. I'm done now. We're going back to Pixie. So it's all, looks actually semi presentable for Yalk. And for when I go on holiday in, like, in September, so I'm not boiling, uh, and then we'll deal with growing it out later. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yes. Books! Yay! Um, yes, but I shall hopefully see you soon. Have a good Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Ah, <sighs> Tuesday. Okay, anyway. I'm waffling. God, why do you put up with me? Seriously, who, who, who are watching these and, and not going, this woman's crazy, let's just leave her alone. Uh, but anyways, thank you. Bye.